Well, talk about uh, diving under the ice to get the samples we were talking about. I mean, it, it was amazing. It was like this like mountain range of like frozen light uh, mountains under there. <laughs> yeah. So those are, yeah, those are sea ice ridges. And basically what happens when sea ice forms, which is very different from glacial ice that forms on land from deposited snow that gets compressed and then turns into ice. Sea ice forms from frozen seawater. So you get this cycle, this annual cycle of sea ice formation in the fall and into the winter, then it grows really thick and then it begins to melt in the summer. And so we're out there in the summertime. And what happens in the Arctic is because it's an ocean surrounded by continents, there's this um, constraining factor. And so just like, as you can imagine, in other circumstances, if there's wind or some type of pressure pushing on that ice, it's going to mm -hmm. fracture. And when it fractures and there's pressure on it, it creates these ridges. So basically mountains of sea ice, all those sea ice blocks you saw. And then sometimes that pressure alleviates, maybe because of the tide is changing, maybe because the storm has passed um, and it goes through this cycle. And so what becomes really cool about it, which you can see from the footage, is that it creates all of this heterogeneity. So what otherwise would have looked like a flat piece of ice, like a piece of paper per se, you've crumpled it up and created all of these cracks and nooks and places that sea ice algae and phytoplankton can live. And they're somewhat protected from say predators or they're protected um, from being washed away. And they just kind of stay suspended in those little pockets. And then they can grow really, really well when there's enough nutrients and enough light. And so that's what it makes what makes it special. And as you can mm. imagine, giant blocks of ice are really hard to sample, um, especially on the surface. And we use a, a simple coring tool. Usually it's like a drill connected to a tube and you mm. cut out like a column of ice. But if you're dealing with like a very heterogeneous ridge of ice that could be tens of meters thick, it's not so easy to sample the things that are living on the surface of the bottom of ice. So that's why we had to dive, basically. That's the most delicate way of collecting that type of sample from that particular habitat. Well, visually, it was amazing. I'm sure it was extremely cold in there. So, well, uh, yeah, that's the other thing. You get cold watching it. 